Canto V, this is really what Francesca does. Dante is exploring reading. So she is reading the text of Lancelot and lapses into an imitative strategy of reading. She wants to be like the heroine that she reads about. She refuses to take an interpretive distance from whatever specular image. She wants to feel like a queen. And she thinks that Paolo can be like Lancelot. And this is exactly what, what we call the mimetic quality. It's not my term. It's the term of uh, uh, René Girard, who has written about this question of the imitative structure of desire. Between us and the object of desire, there is always the presence of uh, a mediator. And this time, in this case, the mediator is Lancelot for, uh, for Paolo, and it is Guinevere for Francesca. But there is more to this story. For instance, you cannot read this story without thinking about how Dante frames the experience of Francesca with the language of time. Do you see how, how many references there are to time? Uh, there's no greater grief that remembering happiness, the past happiness, and this your doctor, meaning, meaning uh, Virgil knows very well. And then she starts talking about her adventure. We were reading one day, you remember? That day we read no further. It's all about time, about the question of time, as if an experience. So what is the problem with this idea of time? Why is Francesca understood? Why is her story represented in terms of time? In effect, I think Francesca wants, there's one great passion that she has, and her passion is to do away with time. She's expressing the desire that her happiness that lasts here very briefly, a brief instant, may really last an eternity. Or maybe, or maybe, just maybe, she may expressing the wish that, or the idea, the insight more than the wish, that one moment of happiness is well worth an eternity of pain. Or maybe she's just saying uh, that it's not too bad that the love story I had only lasted the briefest uh, possible time. At any rate, what all this shows is that primarily Francesca not only abdicated choice and not only thought that her own will was powerless vis-a-vis -vis the irresistible force of this transcendent idea of love, but above all, she has betrayed the, the order of necessity and time, that her passion violates the order of time. And above all, from this point of view, Dante goes on reflecting about his responsibilities of an author, as an author, uh, when he's confronted with the reader. What have I done? What have I written that what I write has been understood in a way that is not necessarily the one that he meant, uh, the meaning that he meant to assign to the Vita Nuova? Canto V and the drama that is unfolded in Canto V, a drama ostensibly of desire. Yes? It's the story of uh, the great passion of uh, a woman, one of the most famous women in literature, uh, uh, Francesca, uh, has with her brother-in-law, Paolo. But the point is that that drama stems directly from the crisis in the pilgrim's mind in Canto IV of Inferno. In what way? It is as if the experience of hubris about the celebrating one's own power and prowess as a poet now has to confront the consequences of that claim. Now Dante comes literally face to face with a reader of his poetry, and the reader of his poetry who understands his poetry in a way that, ne that was not necessarily the one intended by its author. We have now in Canto V the confrontation of reader and poet. And we shall see, Francesca is, of course, as you remember from your reading, just having, having, having read Canto V, is a great reader of texts. She goes on quoting Lancelot, not, not in the version of Chrétien de Troyes, but it's, it's, it's a parallel version. Uh, the, the, it's, it's the same romance. Uh, she goes on quoting from The Art of Courtly Love, this text about the art of love by Andreas Capellanus. And you may remember, I, I, I alluded to at least in one of the earlier talks, and goes on actually quoting to Dante, Dante's own poem 
in the Vita Nuova that we should go and look at in, uh, in a while.